is going to be 10 times more effective than the expensive protein shake you rush to take every time you finish your training. What's the crack, my happy face pullers? If this is your first time in my channel, hi. My name is Alberto, but I go by the name of Facebook Detox on YouTube. My mission here is to entertain, educate, and empower you with everything related to fitness stuff. And of course, I want to make Facebook the coolest, sexiest, and hottest exercise in the entire world. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about three important things that are going to have a tremendous impact on your physical performance. Stay tuned. The body contains 60% water on average. That makes water essential for life. In fact, water is the most important nutrient across the living world. Think about the African savanna for a second. Animals will still try to drink water from these ponds despite having to encounter apex predators like deadly lions lurking around or huge crocodiles poised on low water ready to clutch the living crap out of you. Why would anyone take that type of life-threatening risk? Well, the answer is water. Quite literally, we cannot live without water for more than about 100 hours, whereas other nutrients might be neglected for weeks or months. So what can you do to make sure that you're drinking enough water throughout the day? I'm going to give you three tips that you can implement to help you achieve your water intake goals. First, drink plenty of water right after waking up. This is huge. Think about a regular day in your life. Is there any point in time where you deprive yourself of drinking water for, let's say, longer than four hours? I don't think so. You probably drink water here and there when you feel thirsty. It's such a trivial thing that we usually don't even pay much attention to it. By the time you wake up, your body hasn't taken any water for the last seven to eight hours, so you technically get off bed in a dehydrated state. If the first thing you do is to drink coffee, then you are dehydrating yourself even further. What I personally do instead is to leave a full bottle next to my bed, so when I wake up, I take a long gulp of water before I even leave my bedroom. Tip number two, keep a bottle of water with you at all times. Essentially, you want to turn your water bottle into your most trusted companion, something you couldn't live without. Regardless of the situation, whether you go for a 15-minute stroll around the corner, drive to work, or get stuck in a business meeting, carrying a water bottle with you will make your life easier when it comes to staying hydrated. This is a habit that could take a long time to develop, but if you do, you'll be glad you made this life-changing decision. Just make sure that you have a non-plastic bottle so that no toxins pass onto the water that you're drinking. Tip number three, eat more water. Include some water-rich foods to your nutrition. Some fruits and vegetables are more than 90% water. These also tend to have very low calories, they're nutrient-dense and fiber-rich foods. Two, walking more or moving more in general. I'm pretty sure this is not the first time you hear this, but time after time, multiple scientific research has shown that walking is actually one of the best physical activities you can do for your overall health. When done regularly, the benefits of walking are superb. So what are the things that you can do to get all these super awesome benefits of walking on a regular basis? Here are three things I would like you to consider. Tip number one, avoid elevators and escalators. Unless you are physically impaired or have a serious medical condition, you have the physical capabilities to take the stairs. Yep, it's definitely harder and not the easiest option available, especially in today's world where elevators and escalators are everywhere. Malls, airports, 
universities, offices, it's crazy. And I know what some of you guys are gonna say already. Detox, I worked on the 23rd floor of XYZ company. It would be mad to take the stairs. Listen, you need to stop thinking in black and white terms. If you work on the 23rd floor, take the elevator and get off on the 20th floor. Then take the stairs and walk up three levels. Do that for a month and develop the habits. Three floors up and three floors down five times per week is gonna make a huge difference in the long term and will make your colleagues wonder why you are in such good shape. Tip number two, make the most out of your commute to work. I totally understand that many of you might have to drive to work every day. But again, the solution always lies in the small details. Park somewhere close to the office, but put some distance in between the parking lot and the actual building where you work. You don't need to go crazy with this. Even if you park only three blocks away from work, that'd be the equivalent of adding five to 10 minutes of walking to your day. For those of you who use public transport, the solution would be simply to get off one stop before the one that you usually exit. That way you can still squeeze in those extra five to 10 minutes of walking into your daily routine. Do the same on your way back and you'll be dandy. Tip number three is my personal favorite and the one that I'm the proudest of because I religiously implement it every time. Walk across the gym during your rest periods in between sets. Instead of sitting around staring at your phone, you could walk instead. Let's say that you have to complete 10 sets of total work and you take two minutes of rest in between your sets. Well, those are the easiest extra 20 minutes of walking you can get especially if you work in an office environment, use every single minute wisely to try to offset the sedentary habits that come alongside your job. Work. Did you see the repeating pattern here? This is not about training hard, but rather about sneaking in those extra minutes of low intensity physical activity into your daily routine without having a major impact on your schedule. And of course, sleep. Not the sexiest topic in the fitness community, however, the most important of them all. Because this channel is all about fitness, I will discuss in more detail how sleep can have an impact on physical performance and body composition. First, if your goal is to pack on muscle mass, getting good quality sleep is gonna be 10 times more effective than the expensive protein shake you rush to take every time you finish your training. Let me repeat this again. As a non-competitive recreational lifter who trains hard in the gym just to get stronger overall, there is no product in the market that is gonna match the anabolic effects sleep has on muscle gain. You're much better off spending your time and resources in improving the quality and quantity of your sleep by 10% than buying an expensive, flavory supplement that might not work for you after all. Deep sleep promotes the release of hormones that boost your muscle building process because these hormones will help repair cells and tissues that have been previously damaged in the gym. Prioritize that. It's for free and it actually works. Second, if your goal is reducing your body fat percentage, sufficient sleep reduces the risk of weight gain because sleep helps maintain a healthy balance of the hormones that make you feel hungry and full. Sleep also affects how your body reacts to insulin, the hormone that controls your blood glucose level. Third, physical performance. Have you ever tried to complete a workout with two to four hours less than what you typically sleep? Sleep deprivation will negatively impact your performance in the gym. I'll go as far as saying that after a shitty night, you can consider yourself lucky if you can get through your session for that day Every rep will be struggle, weights you are usually comfortable with will feel super heavy, and you'll start wondering if you're doing something wrong. Not really, you just need to go back to bed and rest. 
After all, if you are a recreational lifter, training should account for 5% of your week, whereas sleep is an activity that takes up a third of your life. All right, what can you do to maximize the benefits of sleep? First, have a consistent sleep schedule. Go to bed and wake up roughly at the same time every day, even on the weekends. At least 30 minutes before you turn off the light to go to bed, avoid bright artificial light coming from screens. This blue light signals the brain that it's time to be awake, thus throwing our body's clock out of sync. And third, avoid drinking coffee late in the afternoon as the effects of caffeine can last as long as 8 hours. But enough of me talking, I want to hear from you now. Smash the like button to let me know if you want me to make more videos like this. And consider subscribe if you want to learn more about fitness and health. I'll see you guys and girls next Sunday. In the meantime, drink plenty of water, eat your veggies, and do your face pulls.